After spending time immersed in the natural environment, I am recharged. I am automatically in alignment with the natural frequency of every mountain, plant, insect and animal, even the wind and the sun. I am emotionally, psychologically, physically and spiritually balanced, a state I consider to be essential to health and therefore essential to life as much as sunlight, water and oxygen are essential. Though I have on many occasions shared this experience with friends, I usually go solo, seeking the most secluded areas of the forest, not because I am antisocial, but because I prefer to enjoy nature while taking a necessary break from human interaction. The vibrational energy I feel when I am there reminds me of how the ancient Egyptians and other ancient peoples would construct a temple using sacred geometry. The specific dimensions of the space would be constructed using the same shapes and proportions found in nature, raising the vibrational frequency of anyone entering, since we in our human temples are vibrational beings. This in turn reminds me of an idea I'd read long ago stated by Albert Einstein, paraphrased here. A particle's frequency will fall in alignment with the frequency of the field it is in. When I'm in nature, I am that particle whose frequency automatically attunes to the frequency of the dominating field. The highest vibrational frequency in the universe is unconditional love. It is God's frequency. Einstein himself said he believed in the God of nature. It's possible that like me, he too may have marveled at the mathematical proof of divine consciousness inherent within the golden means ratio, a proportion found in nature so perfect, we can only imperfectly express it as an irrational number that has no end. Einstein is also attributed to a statement that matching one's frequency to the frequency of one's desire will manifest in the physical world, denoting this not as a philosophical phenomenon, but a scientific one in the terms of physics. I would add this is an illustration of spiritual science. Yeshua, Krishna, and other great avatars of the world were manifested directly from that highest level of consciousness the level of God consciousness. They attained and held this level of awareness in human form and sought to teach humanity by personal example how to attain this awareness via the opening of the heart chakra to compassion and thus attained the highest vibrational frequency of unconditional love, God's love. To follow them was not to pledge allegiance to them the way one might pledge loyalty to a human king or treat them like a club owner and they his promoters, promising to bring as many people as they can into their club, but to follow them by emulating their example of living from the heart in the vibrational frequency of unconditional love, the frequency of God. It could only be from the frequency of unconditional love that one could forgive one's transgressor seven times seven. It must be noted that this was not an affectionate or sentimental love, which as the great Martin Luther King Jr. pointed out, would be ridiculous, but instead a love that allows one to cherish all life and recognize the divine in all creation to acknowledge all of humanity as being part of that divine creation, even when standing up for justice, even when dealing with those who may not acknowledge that shared humanity, and indeed, in their mistreatment of you, may have forgotten their own. Such awareness of being aligned with the power of the entire field creates an all-powerful energy field of the heart and influences the vibrational frequency of the entire planet and indeed all the cosmos, giving birth to great spiritual movements in humanity. Again, as Einstein correctly ascertained, this is science, or more specifically a scientific approach to the spiritual reality of what we call life. It's a shame this man's contributions have been reduced to the creation of one theory and having a talent for making funny faces. Speaking of Einstein's equation, 
It may be possible he was implicating the dynamics of quantum physics whereby the speed of light squared referred not to how fast a photon could move linearly in physical space from point A to point B, but rather to vibrational speed of expansion and contraction in relation to the scale of vibrations, with unconditional love being at the top of the scale, while the emotional states like fear and indifference reside at the lower end, while also recognizing all vibrations are relative to one another. In keeping with this idea, each unit of light consciousness vibrating at the highest level of unconditional love is imbued with God consciousness and can lower its vibration along with countless other units of light consciousness to eventually manifest as what our gross senses perceive as physical matter. Yet even when the smallest packets of consciousness manifest as physical reality, they still remain part of the whole field and thus are never separate from the whole but always a part of it. So too are we all particles united as one with everything within this field some have called God, the universe, the divine mystery, or any of the countless names for that which we call God. In the film series Star Wars, George Lucas called the field the Force, and the wise Jedi Master Yoda helped his student Luke realize we are all luminous beings, surrounded and bound by what unites us as one. Love and light always.